in a... <laughs> Louder. What do you think of that? That's pretty cool. That's my working in cars in another state kit. I like that. The travel necessities. Yeah, I was going to bring sockets and some other stuff, but... Uh... You'll just borrow people's and take them back with you? Well, they, they have some, but he, he told me if I had a favorite tool, I was going to bring it. And this is my new favorite tool. So It's a good one. I like the whole I'm pretty stoked. Yeah, no, and then I was able to stuff some of the other stuff in yeah. it. So we're ready to go. That's handy. This keeps breaking bolts. Why? Oh, hey, what are you doing here? Oh, hey. Welcome to my new home. It looks a lot it's like your home. Texas home. home. <laughs> so anyhow, we are, uh, I've made the journey down here to uh, to Dallas, Texas. And what, what are we doing today? Adam? Woo, this is a big one. Dude, this must break bolts like nobody's business. No, it has a nice safety setting on it. 55 foot pounds. Does it let you, oh it does? Yeah. Does it, it just stops Does it, it let you modulate? Yeah. Like the speed? Really? I locked it. So mine mine doesn't. Why? Yours what is, is it just wide open all the time? See, that's cool. Yeah, this is way cooler than mine. Don't say that. The no. other one. Mine's like on or off and it just breaks bolts. Oh. We need one of these ones then. Yeah, this is dope. This is good for suspension stuff. It is. That's why I brought it. Jealous. You don't have to like put it all in there. So Adam, what are we doing here in Texas today? Oh, hanging out and working on the Z's. You've been doing a lot of that lately, right? Yeah, I know. I like the Z's. They're fun. Are you going to give this one away too? I don't think that's my name away. Actually, I think Aaron's giving it no away. Way. To us. Oh, okay. Funny. <laughs> oh, is he uh, talking about it yet? No. Okay. <laughs> Turf in the hallway. All right, so we meet the 370, or the 370Z again. So we are down in Texas, and uh, Aaron got a bunch of rad parts for this 370Z for us to, uh, to kind of drive down here in Texas in his, his Street Legal series. Hey, Adam, what is that? Hey, what's up? Ooh, what is that? What are those? BC. Coilers. Ooh. What else? What are those? You're all sad about it. Yeah, it's exhaust and everything. What, what is this? Intake. Air filters and things? Yep. Oh, that's rad. Um, yeah, all this they stuff. want to send headers, too. Yeah, I wasn't down so. to that just yet. What are, the, what are those? Oh, more ISR? ISR stuff. More Good ISR line. things? Exhaust. And that's, exhaust. That's Inky Mountain? Yep. All right, let's go get Inky Mountain down. And uh, what these is, are control arms. ISR senses control on this. There's way more stuff than I thought there was for this car. Yeah, and here's another area. Nope, that's all empty already. And we're all installing it in a day. No, yeah. Like, two days, pretty much two days. A day and a half. Three kids installing it in a day. Wise Fab on the 370 and Vet Mets on the C6. He said we're taking out an empty mountain? Yeah, yeah, right. All right, we got four wheels. Uh, I have NTO3s, but I think it'll look better just on RPF lines. I think the NTO3s need a bigger sidewall. So 18 by 10 and a half, just grab two of those. It's like Aaron's own inventory of RPF1s. Yeah, I have a desk in there made of them too. Must be nice, Aaron. Must be nice. Alright, there's that one. There's a 10 and a half. This is an RPF1. And then here shortly we're gonna throw the Z on the lift. I'll show, you guys, I'll show you guys Aaron's uh, C6 in a second. I have to do that. Is there anything else? <laughs> um, we should probably grab... So the front tires are going to be down there for it. I'm going to get 245s from Michael. So we'll grab... Adam, you looked really majestic in that light over there. Yeah. So this car was... Uh, wrecked into a pole at, I guess, one of the Lone Star events? Or maybe it was just in the parking lot of the event? I'm not 100% yeah, sure. in a parking lot. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so anyhow, Aaron basically pulled out like the front frame with his truck and then uh, bought basically the radiator support, a radiator, and then now this upper tie bar that we need to put in for the latch. And then he just purchased a hood for it. It's funny because it's, it's just another OEM black one. But the last time we were down here, it didn't have a hood on it. Um, you can see the front bumper still has some damage. Or it had a hood on it, but it was wrecked. So that's going to be the first thing we want to do. I really want to drive this thing actually on the street because I've never actually 
driven a Z, like a 350Z or 370Z ever. So I want to see what it's like on the street before we install all this crazy stuff. Have you guys ever installed a Y-Strap on a 370? No. Or just, no. We've never even looked at it before. Yeah, it looks simple. <laughs> oh, hey, if you want gloves, I got gloves. I brought my gloves. You brought your, uh, your dirty gloves? No, I got clean ones. Oh, they probably won't make my face all greasy. Well, I got these nice green ones if you want. Um, I'm gonna steal some. Oh, yeah, and fine. Huh? So we can hook it up. This is the little whole thing. Uh, do you want to find the hood bolt? Or the yeah. hood nut? First start since I was here. If the battery's charged, we, we've tried a couple times, and the battery's just like completely dead. It like drains itself. That was good. We're getting ready to install this uh, AM intake on there. <laughs> this is the exhaust that's on it right now. It's like a really nice arc dual exhaust. And you got a uh, like a single ISR exhaust in this box and a new Y pipe. So we might install that because I guess this one is like so low to the ground it just rubs everything. Because they're the projector style. We don't know what's in this box. Supposedly it's a seat. We don't know what kind of seat. Is it a seat? Sick. Is this that seat that you were talking about? It's just a generic eBay one. He loves them because they don't have any labels on them. I wonder if I just use the factory to I got it. Oh, you got it? Yeah. All right, do a little flick right here. <laughs> Dude, that would be a crazy challenge. How much faster does it feel? That'd be a nice little parking lot to like dick around yeah, in. Yeah, it feels real happy. Real happy. Too bad there wasn't a lot. I'm sure there is. That's third. This is very, very nice. It does feel like Forza y. Like yeah. the sounds. So this is Aaron's uh, C6 Corvette, and these guys are going to be installing their little. So it's the angle kit you guys made, right? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Let's take a look at that. Where's that? Or is it still in the office? It's still in the office. Okay, we'll, we'll check no, it out here no, in a little no. bit. It's actually oh. in the passenger seat on the floorboard. Uh oh. <laughs> Opening the doors with it jacked up. Oh no. Uh oh. Myth busted. And so basically, you guys just kind of have a shortened yep. tie rod pickup right there. Seed shortened cut, and then uh, Nick can explain a little bit better. He's the one that designed hey all this stuff. We took a factory knuckle, and we're essentially 
kind of modeling after the S chassis. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that the C5 platform and the C6 are all parts interchangeable. Yeah. And actually all four knuckles at all four corners are the exact same. So these knuckles are the same as those up front. And what you see, like when you look at this one, if you're utilizing this in the rear, this is for your emergency brake. Yeah. And what we did with the factory one, so you could not use this in the rear anymore because the factory pickup points out really here. Long. Yeah, so we shortened it up and by shortening it up, we're increasing, you know, how much travel that this has. Yeah. Because we're, you know, moving more towards the That's pretty, right. That's pretty simple point. too. So yeah, it's very simple. And essentially we're want people out there in these cars. So Yeah, that's pretty rad. And uh, we've got another stay another set. Um, or I guess multiple stages on how this is going to work. So lower control arms are, have already been done and they're, I think we're 60 plus degrees of steering angle with those. That's crazy. And you said you're going to get close crazy. to like 53 with this? That's what I'm thinking between 50 and 53. Um, I achieved the thing is around, it's like 52, 53, really rudimentary, like measurements at my house yeah. with a big brake kit and my calipers were actually hitting a lower control arm. Oh wow. So these are a smaller brake. So I'm hoping that we'll maybe get a little bit more out of it. That'll be sweet. So. Oh yeah, so we're going to be installing the WiseFab on the Z over there, and you guys are going to be installing your kit right over here. here. Yes, sir. And uh, so yeah, basically, two parts of the shop. We get the lift. Apologize, but I think yours is a little bit simpler to. Well, that's, oh, yeah. yeah, that's what we wanted. We yeah. wanted an application that anybody that wanted to get into the sport or get into this can get into one of these cars really cheap and just bolt this thing on their driveway and take off and go to the track and have fun. And while you know it doesn't, you don't sacrifice any manners on the road. So I'm just getting this thing. Up in there so we can get her put on the lift right, and uh, did coilovers, wise fab, you're, you're all the things. Right. It sounds like a cam off to the side. It doesn't mean anything. It's still a cam. That's a cam and then that's a cam. Yeah, and you like added a cam to delete a regular cam. Yeah. Do we know what angle it started with whenever we finished last time? Barely. Barely any. Almost none. Give me an angle going now. Oh! So gross. Sway bar comes off. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> That's why you need one. Back now? No. Or the whole thing comes off. Why is that coming through mobs? No. Wouldn't it be so nice if the whole thing was bolted on one unit? Pretty sure it's not going to be anywhere near that. <laughs> So now that we have this whole side installed on this, you can see everything's all bolted on. I didn't really do anything specific. I mostly ran the time lapse this whole time. So I think now I'm gonna do kind of an install video on the other side, because it's basically all stock. But we did end up having to, uh, to clearance the subframe right there, because when this went in, sorry, it basically hit that. So we had to kind of grind it out. So we got the little, that guy out and cut it. Yeah, so this is like the lead wheel. Look at that angle. That's insane. This is a trailing wheel on this side, which is like nothing. And then, so this is the lead on this side, which is still basically nothing. And then this is the trailing over here. And that's like, that's just ridiculous. So. We have it on the like the highest offset for uh, like so it has the most Ackerman. So this will feel a little bit more like a 240 instead of it feeling like a shopping cart, which is does feel like feels really unnatural and drift. I think we might have to mess with the the brake lines though. But 
don't know. I guess we'll uh, we'll get to doing this side. Alright, adapter. Adam, are you done with the, the side guy? What? The side guy? What about him? I need him. I don't have him. Oh. Apologize. Oh, I got him. So you gotta remove the brake lines, the brackets. We should do a timer. See how long it takes. Do a timer. Oh, wow. Oh wow, that, that really doesn't like that. Be the slowest Wise Fab install ever. Why? I, I don't know. I'm just being silly. It's gonna be the fastest Wise Fab install ever. Hey, can you know if you pass me the 19 wrench, please? Sean, can you have me another zip tie? Yeah, but. Once I find them. Free. Well, I messed up. Actually, no, we're good. Good? Yep. We got it on. Oh, man, these rotors are heavy. No. I'm assuming he doesn't. How is it bad? No, it's just like halfway through. Oh. Damn, what are we gonna do? Oh, I just think. Leave it? Yeah, I mean, what if we know but we're the ones who are driving the car? What? What if we know? Because we're the ones who's driving the car, so. Yeah. I'm sorry. What the heck is that? Is there a damper on the sway bar? Yeah, dude, there's a legit a little shock on the sway bar. It's a Yamaha shock. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not tall enough. Can you get? Can, uh, there might be a 12. The upper bolts. Yeah, well, let me see the 13 right fast. Yeah, it's 12. Cool. You know what that is? You got it down. Do you need those back in now? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Yeah, maybe. Damn it. Yeah, that's pretty. Sorry. Hey, do you guys see my camera anywhere? Hello? Um. Yes, it is. I, I don't. Right. Oh my god, it's good on Is that the bolt? The sway bar is the bolt? Yeah. What? That's nice, huh? Do we have to go get bolts or what? Maybe. How's this I think Adam took all my tools. Yeah, I mean, it's like a new one. To be honest. How's it working over there? It's still plugged in, isn't it? Uh, so, it's still out. The actually a little bit out now. Camber, a magnet or probably not. I mean, it's. You can't really tell what it does because it's going to tow out as we set it down. Is it? Yeah. 
That guy has a, uh, a Milwaukee drill right there. There has to be a Milwaukee charger around here somewhere. Go ahead and try and clear that piece. I was thinking about it. Unless you want to do it since you did the other one. Really? Oh, come on. Come on now. Really? It's kind of nice working on new cars though because they're not all like messed up. That's a little, that's, that's a little while. All right, you ready? Am I ready? Huh? I'm ready to watch, baby. You're ready to what? Watch. Oh. Oh. Jeez. So this guy right here has to go over here in the back. You might as well, and you just tighten it down pretty much as soon as you put it up there. Bam. 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 Right here. I know. Yeah, by the time Adam gets back, this is gonna be done. Well, he did like. There we go. I got about two times a year in me, and that's about it. Or you just like Can you go see if that bat how that battery's doing? Cause that would that'd make me happy. Oh yeah. You wanna just use it? Yeah, let's say the diamond's got juice in it. Full crab block, we have acronym. Tight. Well, because I was able to just spin it and then it like goes up and down because the coil. Yeah. So it's like it's on like a like a spring or like on a screw. So it like it. There we go. Yeah. So if you're gonna do this, make sure to install those different. A few moments later. That's a wild scoop, kid. Don't even, don't even get me started on the tail whip. I'm going to have to get my ankle guard now. Two, yeah, sorry. Two jerseys. It's all right. You're not you when you're high. That's a blue game. That's my favorite. Is there any brake cleaner around here? To put so much stress on the rack. Right. Is the the only thing that I don't. I just relocated my rack in my 240 like three years, two years ago, and it's just been like. It's a magnesium cradle though. This is. Oh shit! Yeah. So. There's no There's yeah. There's nothing. No way around that. We need to. We need to change your oil in this. Um. I found the lines that, well, shit, they'll probably, are y'all doing a dual caliper or inline? <coughs> inline. Oh, then y'all are doing the same thing we are. So, um, so yeah, we're going to go to some of tomorrow. Same things and everything. I've already got the parts list on my phone. There's, uh, our whole... Can you finish that one juice swap? Um, it depends on, like, what parts I had. I'm just saying, Supra. Work on the Supra. About, Work on the <laughs> I 
All right, so I pretty much got this uh, this side all done and buttoned up. Just need to kind of dial in this little thing. This basically limits the angle by uh, hitting the control arm on the opposite side. So that's basically the bump stop. You can see that, and you can kind of adjust. And there's uh, settings basically. You can see like this one has the the five dots or whatever on it. So that uh, then you know you know how much you have. But I think we might actually be able to keep the stock sway bar, which is pretty rad. I didn't think we were going to be able to do that. But I think just because we're not running the most Ackerman with it. Oh, look at that leading wheel. We haven't done any alignments with it yet, but uh, but it's doing all right. So Adam just got done. Did you get the exhaust all installed? I want to start it. Okay. Yeah. So we took off the like the Arc Performance exhaust and uh, installed this uh, ISR single tip exhaust. Yeah. Hold on the ground and we got the single tip Shulman in the air. Knowing I'd say it'd be cool with a bumper tuck, but this diffuser's sweet. Yeah. What should we put over here? Like uh, a smiley face? That'd be funny. Or like a... We could put a ghost tip. Like just hang a muffler there. Like a different one too. Oh, that's that dampener you're talking about. Yeah, what is that? I don't know. Isn't that weird? Well, I noticed there's like a subframe damper or something weird. That's odd. I don't know what it even does. Maybe it just like makes it so it doesn't vibrate. Yeah. Or resonate or do some weird stuff. Yeah, let's uh, let's start it. I'll climb up. Adam LZ in a tree. I do this a lot. It's weird because like normally I'm worried about how I had on the ceiling. I got nice ceilings here. I don't know what they're doing down there. I think they were playing around on the leaf spring from the Corvette. Yeah, they climbed all the way up there for that. Did that. Oh no, I, I disconnected the battery. Uh, <laughs> Apologize. We have to lower them down. You can just stay up there and we can lower you down. Okay, that works. Definitely sounds a little bit louder. Probably letting it warm up for just a sec before we give her to the old rib. What's the sound? Kind of lame. Like you. Do you think it sounded better before? No, it's, it's definitely a little louder. Yeah, I think it's got a little bit more note to it. Yeah. I think it needs test pipes. It definitely needs test pipes. It would get pretty rowdy. Dirty Adam. Oh, that sounds way better. Does it? You wanna hear it? All right, so Adam set it down on some wheels. Yeah. That fitment in the back isn't too bad. It kinda looks a little towed in. Yeah. In the back, though. So we, uh, so what, what, what is the issue with the coils that we had? Uh, basically like, he got the normal kit that comes with a separate spring from the shock and then got the parts to make it a true coilover, but the springs are too short. So we could have almost got the proper preload, but the coils would have bottomed out on each other because they weren't long enough. Yeah, so we don't have the, uh, the proper arm in the bottom to replace that coil, bu the bucket, right? Yeah, we just have the stock like spring bucket that has, are they called eccentric bolts? Yeah. That like, so the minor cam only have enough like minor camber adjustment whereas we should have like a lot and that's what you just did in well, your giveaway the card it's the toe that we're limited oh, okay. we have camber arms and we have traction arms and that's just what you did in your giveaway car mm -hmm. the your 350z so yeah this uh this thing definitely sounds rad it uh the angle is pretty crazy we had a bunch of issues with the with it kind of touching the subframe so uh i don't know right now as it sits it kind of has a little bit of toe out see that that's that's about as much as we have Definitely gonna have to figure out something for the front, either raise it up or get some sort of like a little over fender and like cut this, um, just cause that, that's definitely not gonna have it. But I think we're gonna lift it, or I would like to lift it off the wheels for tonight and then actually uh, put it on the ground and then see how, how the angle looks from there. Don't say that, don't say that. <laughs> hey, what do you think about this angle? It's crazy. What did you just do? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> There's a size 10 like right there. <laughs> 11, bro. <laughs> oh, 11. <laughs> Adam, get out of the way. We need to see that angle. Damn. And it still is a little bit towed out, so we're at lacking trailing angle. That's pretty rad. I mean, compared to what this thing had before, which was like, which was nothing. Corvette, drift Corvette angle. Started out 25 to the right, 31 to the left. We ended uh, 41 to the right, and because this is kind of backwards, yeah. And 53 to the left, so plus 22 to the left and plus 12 to the right. So this was like, right there was stock angle, and then yeah. that was, yeah, the other angle. So this is leading angle, and then this is trailing angle. Right. 
That's not too bad. Can we can we see it on the car? Like twist, like turn it on and. I think he's getting ready to go test it. Oh really? Or is he gonna just drive it home? It's gonna be his daily. It is the daily right now. For you or for Aaron? For Aaron. You have to go home and edit tonight, Adam. Where'd Adam go? He's over there. And you guys had to cut the back of the fender off. Yeah, yeah I chopped all that. Wow. Why did you do that, True? Huh? I just did it with like a chop. Just a little. Trevor, are you going up. to edit tonight? Um, I don't know. What? Maybe. So is that the? <laughs> Aaron, turn the steering wheel. Aaron, I put Rotel at 15. So they have an in house dyno, but they don't have an in house tire machine. I mean, it's set. Tuning it hasn't finished yet. I don't know what that means, but that's what it is. Oh, that angle. Ooh. Yeah, it looks like quite a bit on this side. Wow, that's fancy. It looks like a drift car. Oh, he just barely missed that damn battery. You got it! You don't have to It's an angle. Yeah, that's a tight, tight zone right there. Compared to a stock world, I guess we're back here at the, the shop the next day, and uh, these guys are messing with the Corvette. Get the hydro in. Yeah. We just stopped at Summit and got a bunch of, uh, of random stuff, and then uh, so they are using like the pullback style, and we are using. Uh, we're I, using push pull. You're using push pull. I'm using. I don't know. I don't pull know. Pull back this, on you, yeah. Yeah, pull back on us. So now we're gonna go figure out how do we could get this thing uh, in the Z and get it all plumbed up. We did stop at uh, Summit Racing here, which is really nice because it's convenient in Dallas or Arlington. And uh, basically ordered everything online, and then you pick it up in store. We had to wait like 20, 30 minutes for them to go like grab everything. But there's a ton of like random fittings and stuff. Um, yeah, as long as we can kind of figure out like where to place this thing in here to where it's like gonna not interfere with a bunch of stuff we should be all right um, this is uh, basically all the crap that we got all the fittings and stuff we got some arrow catch hood pins because we didn't really like these things they, they weren't really working it's kind of bent and tweaked and these guys aren't working and the latch is broken in there um, got a bunch of little things little lines because we are gonna delete the factory brake line you can see that's like a hard line right here it's basically really stupid, just gets kind of bound up and in the way. Um, so I got some, uh, some things to convert those over. Um, hopefully I got the right length of these. I only got a 36 inch one. Um, but yeah, got a bunch of random fittings and stuff. So I'll try to show you guys a little bit more in detail what we're planning on doing. So right over here, there's the ABS pump. And uh, so on the hydro you basically have an in and an out i'd have to see the diagram on which one's the actual in and which one's the out but i got the fittings to convert because i believe this one is uh, the rear or actually it goes like front right left rear or rear left and then uh, rear right front left so what you have to do is you have to swap two of these lines over i think this one so the front left and the front right will be over here, something like that. You have to swap them, so basically these are paired with each other on the front and these are paired with each other on the rear, or one of those, and then uh, we basically take this fitting right here and we uh, we run the hydro from that into the, well, we, we run the fitting out of the master cylinder into the hydro and then it comes through the hydro to right here, so that way when we pressurize the brakes, it actually pressurizes it right here for the rear, and then, uh, yeah, hopefully that, uh, Hopefully that works. Hopefully, I kind of feel like I got the wrong fittings because I was looking at Z stuff and this is actually, might be a little bit bigger. That looks like an M12 by 1.0 instead of an M10. So we uh, might have already ran into our first issue. All right, so we're removing uh, the center console in here. There's uh, basically this guy that just pops right up. There's a couple screws holding these little side panels on. And then you can see right here, 
on the bottom there's two screws and uh, we just have to disconnect those and then I think this thing will just lift straight up. I should probably know this because I parted out one of these a long time ago and that's where I got my transmission but uh, it's been a while. Alright, so what we're doing with uh, the lines, like I explained earlier, I was going to tap into the ABS pump, but that uh, is not going to work because I don't have the correct fittings. Uh, but down here behind the passenger side splash shield, there's this little distribution thing. And it basically just passes right through, but it's kind of like a little bulkhead. Um, and so what we're going to do is basically take both of those lines right there and tee them into one. Um, so what, what happened is, uh, so this is M10 by 1.0. And so they have this Toyota Corolla out here that has a, uh, I don't know, they basically robbed the buckets out of it for Jay-Z stuff. And uh, so anyhow, we, we stole this, or Adam came out here and stole this little T off of it, which is really nice. And then they also have a Toyota 4Runner that's crashed in the front big time. And he's grabbing the one off the, the diff in the back because there's like another little distribution one and it should be the correct fittings so where we won't have to cut anything and then if we do go back or if we do eventually go to a uh, dual caliper setup we won't have to like put everything back we could just like bolt it back together so uh, true is over there cutting the other brake fitting or this brake bolt because this one was a little bit too long and uh, so this is basically what we're gonna do we're replacing this factory brake line which has this really weird hard line and this other thing that bolts over here and then another thing that bolts over here and, uh, and then it like clips in right there with basically just this thing right here. So it'll be super simple. We'll be able to tie it. It'll uh, less brake fade and stuff like that. It'll probably feel a little bit better. Um, so he's over there cutting the second one since we got that to work. Adam is outside messing with the Forerunner trying to get the thing off it, but he needs some tools. job today they're uh, they're getting pretty close on their hydro getting it all mounted and, and figuring out the lines and everything and then right here we got Adam look you got a creeper thank you sir what are you doing oh just brought in some brake lines I don't know what sound you Yeah, I think it might be one size that you didn't bring. Uh oh. It's okay, what, I got the adjustable. What size do you think that is? I think it's a, I think it's a 17. Can you just cut the line? I mean, I can do that too, but I'm, just, I'm gonna have to take it off at one point or another. Yeah. So it's like almost, was it 5.50? In fact, we literally started at like 4 o'clock this afternoon. Well, everywhere just kind of took a little bit longer. Uh, oh, wow. I was zoomed in. Does it work? Maybe. Well, that one looks shorter. No, it's longer. Oh, yeah, I think we're good. So just got this brake line on and uh, and all hooked up. Need to kind of figure out where we're gonna like tie it to. But this is full lock on this side, so I think that's plenty of length. So we should have good like up and down travel and, and keep it off of things. Um, it has places to tie right here, but we might end up just pulling that off because that's for the factory brake line. But yeah, this thing just wasn't gonna work because this in like bolts to the, the strut and then this bolted to the front like around the front right here and then it had like this really really weird hard line so definitely nice to be able to get rid of that um, these are all the parts that I used just ordered off of uh, Summit so we got this uh, dash 3 line it's 24 inches long so basically 2 feet and it's got a 10 millimeter banjo we have uh, this which is the 10 millimeter banjo bolt some, uh, some crush washers and then this is the little 3N to uh, 10 millimeter female adapter. And that's what uh, basically hooks back up to the factory everything. And you can see right there, it uses the factory clip, so it keeps it nice and tucked and everything out of the way. So yeah, pretty rather. Okay, cool, thank you. We're so close. Maybe we should try to run the e-brake lines because that's that's a really Necessary. important thing. Because the brakes are disconnected and everything needs bled. And yeah, 
well, we should probably do that. Or bolt this, get this seat bolted. Or do an alignment. Yeah, or the other, like, or 20 put the hood pins on. Or do the hood pins, <laughs> or like the 20 other things that we need to do. Yeah, we're doing good. We're doing really good. I'm vacuum all the, the shavings out of here. I got you a tip right there. Oh, thank you. Should I just vacuum it up? No, don't waste that. It's for the boys. Porn, porn, uh, it's sucking for one up in the vacuum for the boys. No, send that to Dave. The poor man Supra. Yeah? He sold it. He did? Yep. Is that breaking news or um, is that no, public I, knowledge? No. He might have. Is, is this thing plugged in? What? The vacuum? Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Can you, uh, if you could hold this, just like right here? Yeah. That would actually work. I, I think. Alright guys, so it is uh, 1 28 in the morning, and uh, the day of the drift event. And we still need to, well, Adam's installing the seat right now, so that's not bad. Um, we ran into an issue with uh, the line earlier, so the line coming out of the back of here. I basically got two short of one, I got 36 inch one, and we should have probably had a five foot, like a 60 inch one, uh, to go down here and mate with those fittings. Um, so we found a random line laying around, and it was like the perfect length, and uh, so anyhow, we just got to the point to where we're like, okay, let's let's tighten everything up, bleed the brakes, and the back of this fitting right here is just spewing out, like from the crimp, so, I mean, it was obviously a used line, so it was probably just a bad line and somebody didn't throw it away, and uh, so, anyhow, the front brakes should be alright, all the fittings are good there. Um, so now we're running into the issue with uh, that the fittings coming out of the Willwood are standard thread. It's like a 7 16 by like 24 or something like that. And the lines on the car and these tees that we like hustled to get are uh, M10 like metric by 1.0. So I guess there is a 24 hour uh, auto zone around here. So we're going to run over there and just try to get a really long hard line. Cut off one of the ends, put this M10 end on it, and then uh, from there, I guess we're just gonna like hardline it and then see if they have like a 7 16 by 24, whatever the one is on the back of the master cylinder. So we haven't started the car yet today, we haven't changed the oil, we haven't aligned it yet. What else? What else haven't we done? The seat belts are giving us fits because they're not really. Like retracting, this one's retracting all right. No, it's not. So they're just like really, really weak how they retract. But that that hydro, I mean, that's in a. How does it feel sitting in there? Adam did a good job welding it up. Yeah, I did. Hey, the seat's a little crooked, but I think we should just leave it. Okay. It feels good. Oh, actually. Like normally, I can complain that I'm tired, but I got plenty of sleep last night. Yeah. Sean's got a nice bed. All right. Yeah, it's got a nice bed. Yeah, so I think we need it. We're, we're gonna go somewhere and try to get the correct fittings and things and stuff. Sorry, I haven't been filming a whole lot. Sean's been filming for me a little bit, but I think we're gonna run and go grab some things. I really do like the way these intakes fit, though. Like, I don't think yeah, we should. Yeah, that's really nice. I mean, that fits really, really. Like, when you had the pieces in the box, you're like, this thing isn't going to fit tight. But now it's like almost all the way sealed all the way around, which yeah, is insane. Yeah, when you were putting it together, it was definitely in question. Yeah. And then it was like, it went on the car and it's really good. Like, wow, that's, that's pretty nice. So we, uh, we got plenty of things, so. We'll probably just leave straight from here and go straight to the drifts. 240, because we're in uh, Texas time, not Colorado time. <laughs> Sorry about your neck. Are you tired, Adam? No. Oh. Um, you got tired. Yeah, so we, uh, we're using the hard line. This like really, really nice clean install with all the braided lines just turned really barbaric, like right at the very last minute to just try and make it. So uh, 
Yeah, we need to figure that out. And then bleed the brakes and then still align it and do all the other things, so. I don't know, I feel like tonight's... Oh, Sean's changing the oil. Oh, I had gloves. It's okay. Oh, you want some towels? Uh, yeah. I yeah. got towels. Yeah, just one. Or two. If you wanted to give me two, that's good. Okay, we're giving you two. Thanks, man. There you go. I've been on the same pair of gloves all day and the one of them, no, the one in my hand just... Yeah, those are it. solid. I just misplaced mine. You gave me some already. You want... Yeah, that works there great. You go. Thanks, Dave. Two towels. Poor Adam's neck. R.I.P. Thumbs up this video if, uh, if you feel bad for Adam's neck. All right, so the Tennessee boys got the Corvette pretty much Please done and dialed. Nothing. So it is uh, almost four o'clock, so because that is to call out of time. So it is three fifty-six in the morning. So we got that whole uh, that hard line on and replaced. So the hard line works. Um, I'll show you a little bit on the inside. So we got it hard lined here on the inside and kind of rough cut just to get it to work. Um, you know, last minute yeah. things, just to make sure that uh, that it works for tomorrow. We uh, went to bleed the brakes and it was leaking on that front left caliper, not the actual caliper, but that fitting, uh, basically the top. I don't know why this one isn't leaking. Actually, this one's leaking. So I think we're gonna have to do the same. We basically basically put like a little crush sleeve in there because this doesn't have a uh, like a little eyeball to like center the, the flare on uh, and actually like, you know, butt it up against. But uh, yeah, the I want to sit in that seat real quick and feel, and feel it real quick. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna try out the seat and the e-brake and all the things. Update. In the morning. We got a sleepy Mustang. We got True oh, over wait. here. If we're raising, it's gonna make it even fun. It's gonna make it even harder. <laughs> yep. So we uh, we got wheels on it, and we're trying to do like a ghetto alignment. Uh, basically, just lowering it on some wheels all four corners and kind of checking it with the toe plates and looking at things and then so the front was really needs to go higher in the front or we're gonna munch the fenders um you're doing all right i'm doing all right he's mostly delirious yeah adam's been sleeping in here for it's been it's been a while we'll go in the office here and we'll check out adam He's been sleeping for, no, he's probably been sleeping for like two hours. There wasn't really like a whole lot of stuff that like one or two people could do at once because we we're doing like a bunch of random shit. So he, uh, he kind of passed out. He, you know, hit that wall. I uh, barely got over it. And then we got another guy over here. He found a, is that just the floor? We got, we got casualties all over. Aaron went home and, uh, yeah, so we're we're trying to figure it out. So we've already we've already did a, a taco run, and then we did a water burger water, water burger run a little bit ago. Oh 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 yeah yeah. And uh, yeah, it's 
pretty rough. So it is 6.48 a.m. It's, uh, it's light outside. It's finally time. To, we're going to go get a little bit of shut-eye, sleep for a couple hours. Probably get showered up, come back here, do last-minute uh, alignment on the back. Start it, and then uh, pretty much drive it to the track, which is like a little over an hour away. And uh, hopefully she works. We got the front end line. The rear's being really, really weird because we didn't have the right uh, coil over spring to convert to true coil where we could actually have like toe adjustment. But we'll be back. All right, back here the next day. We got a little bit of a late start. It is uh, like 2.30, I guess. The event goes until like 5 or so, and we're a little over an hour away. Um, so we might get like an hour on track, maybe. Uh, somewhere in there. It'd be cool if like, Aaron could like, talk to people and see if we can get a little extra time. Stay a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, So we got it pretty much aligned. It looks a lot better today. We raised up the back a lot. Uh, the front we pretty much aligned yesterday, and that's really good. So we're just going to raise it up in the air, do a final like nut and bolt check. Make sure everything looks all right, and then uh, I guess smash this thing in the trailer and uh, tow it up there and go from there. All right, so I took it for just like a little uh, drive? little drive, yeah. and uh, Adam's gonna take it for a little bit. This thing doesn't look low, like high at all. It no, looks it looks it, look, it looks really low. See, it feels good. It looks awesome. How's the placement? For you? Feels good. I'm good with it. Why? It feels there's a lot of angle. Feels like a lot of angle. Really? Yeah. You can feel it just in that little roundabout. Yeah. I mean, that little drift track. Yeah, because you're like, shh. you just feel it backing in. Backies. Oh, that's barely any angle. Here, go the other way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's nothing. so much lower. That's such a rad looking car if the bumper and the hood were on it and it was just like per oh look at it rubbing. Do it again. Oh that that sounds nice. Let's hear them intakes. That's nice because you could actually hear the intakes too. This thing's gonna sound so rad on track. Like coming towards you, you'll hear it just like sucking in, and then as it goes by, it'll just be like. Rrr. All right, so we uh, got this guy towing the. Are oh, you gonna be in my movie? So you guys are towing the the trailer out there with the the Z in it. We're mobbing out here. We didn't have the right uh, ball, and uh, so the, the the power stroke gets a rest today. Uh, Adam's uploading his movie on his Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's not working. And uh, I don't know how you do that every day, especially with what we did last night. Actually, I know how you did. You slept. I didn't sleep that much. Yeah, he, he didn't sleep that much. But he, he had it in this morning on the way here. So, um, yeah, away we go. We're going to get there uh, at exactly 4.30. So we'll have uh, 10 minutes to unload, 10 minutes to drive, and 10 minutes to pack up before they close. Sounds good. Got the brace. We didn't know how to strap this thing in here. God dang. So it is uh, 4.45. We just got out here. <laughs> We got the truck in the trailer. We stopped and we got some gas, so we need to throw that in here. Because I guess there's a bunch of random uh, issues with it, like fuel sloshing and when, during transition. So we might have 10 minutes to drive it. Are you on talking track. about where did to... Tristan? I thought you unloaded this trailer. I told him I didn't want to yesterday. Oh, don't protect him. Definitely. All right, so we had to basically cut off some of the side skirt. It was just like dragging the ground as you drive, uh, which we didn't really notice that until we lowered it, and then it was like too late to, to mess with it. Um, I think this side, yeah, this side's all right. This side's really good because there's like an additional thing holding it on. Yeah, other than that, we're going to check uh, air pressures and then uh, go out and drive. I just went out for a little left truck. Maybe. Well, it's probably all right. We took the drill out. Yeah, there's a bunch of like oh, other like, plastic shit back here that's probably gonna fly around. But... It's all good. Who's this? this? Um, it's Truth. <laughs> oh shit. It <laughs> what? Can we put it in this truck? Yeah. Make sure he gets that.
timing this really, really well. How the temps? Oh, it's not even in the middle. Oh, really? Yeah. Sick. Did you just shred? That felt good. Want to start trading off? Do you want to do... Let me do one more. Okay, and then we'll trade off. Yeah, like do three laps, trade off three laps. Mm -hmm. Like the uh, sicky hand setup. It feels great. Yeah. Super sturdy. Temp's getting a little bit warm, so I turned on the like the defrost and the heater, okay. and then if you just drive it once down the back straight and then back, it should come down to like 220. Aaron, this thing is so rad. Say that again. Wait. Now I'm recording. Inception vlog. Inception. What? Yeah. All right. So uh, if you guys haven't seen Aaron's channel, Lone Star Drift, 
He's uh, he's the one behind all of this, and uh, I'm gonna enter, I'm I'm going on a rant. Do it. I'm letting you go on a rant. So he's trying to get uh, cars to be a lot more simple, like a lot simpler drift cars instead of building FD cars and stuff like that. Uh, so he got this thing really cheap, like five grand. After everything, the wise fab, the coilovers, like the seat. Everything that we need. It was not five grand after all that. No, no, but I'm before. saying, I'm saying yeah. that the car is five grand. God, You're probably around so ten grand cool or so. But you can't buy like a decent cage like LS1. It was obviously wrecked by the way. That's why I got it so cheap. But your bumper is starting to sag right there a little bit. That's okay. But uh, what was that? What was I trying to say? Walk over here so we have the sound. Does yours get wind noise? A little bit. Maybe not as much as yours. <clears throat> Man, that car just looks so good. I haven't seen it from out here yet. It looks amazing. Your Mustang would look that cool if it was like... Yeah. Whatever. Does it look that cool? Yeah. Oh. I really like it. Yeah, I like that thing a lot. Especially on RPF1. What's better, the Mustang or that to drift? I would definitely say this for now. Yeah. Um, I mean, if my Mustang wasn't automatic and EcoBoost and had angle, Yeah. I'd say it's pretty rad. Like if I did an angle kick. So if it wasn't the car it was, it would be rad. If it was the, the Coyote, it'd, but it's pro not. it'd probably be good. The Coyote six speed with an angle yeah. kit, it'd be like that. I think it'd be a rad car. Um, you want to put my camera down so we don't look retarded? Yeah, maybe. So yeah, that is the reason I'm down here in Texas is uh, basically we installed the Wise Fab. So me, uh, Adam, Taylor Ray, uh, we're all going to be kind of coming down here and trading places and competing in like the Texas Street Legal Series, which is a series that he's running down here where he's trying to get people to quit building like insane FD cars before Not they even everyone quit building them. Don't think that. I still love rad cars. But the majority of people like myself should not have a rad, well, that's rad, but you know, like an overbuilt car. That thing looks so cool. It does. It seriously does sound like Forza when you're driving it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, to keep people, keep it simple, basically, and, and have the people that aren't necessarily trying to go to FD and go crazy, to give them seat time and laps and, and I guess end the burnout rate or increase the burnout, no, decrease the burnout rate. Yeah. Before people actually like get super. Race cars are expensive and we need to find a way to pace ourselves so we can drive more and this is how we do it. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up right yeah. there. This, this paces you so you can't change out injectors, you can't put crazy stuff on it, like keeps the car simple. And that car is rad. Like you just gotta choose something that you really like. And I think that both of us find that car like exciting. That no, car, I'm really excited. That, that car is like major, I was gonna say boner time, but like <laughs> it's cool. No, yeah, like if you had that thing in like an FD car out here, like that's almost like cooler. Yeah. Like, a, like a caged LS1 S14 with like the coolest paint and body kit ever. And I, I'm gonna watch that thing. Yeah. Cause we've seen the, the other things too many times, but yeah, that's, that's just rad how simple it also, is. Also wheel fitment and cool things like that look cool. Yeah. So like if the wheels fit really well, most things look cool. Yeah, and the other also thing is- I'm used to seeing drift cars in one color. Yeah, and a lot of people they'll buy like a 240 for like 2,500 bucks running with a KA in it and then instantly go and spend $3,500 on a stock SR swap. Yeah. And at that point, you're already at uh, like what this is, which is insane. But uh, yeah, anyhow, I think, the, I think it's really rad what he's doing down here. I'm gonna bring my car down here a couple times. I'd like to get the Mustang going shortly, um, but I don't know, we, we got some other stuff really going on. I really wanna drive an EcoBoost Drift Mustang, build a manual into it and do that. I think that would be rad. Yeah, but the, the 2JZ they would do, be- It just doesn't have it. It's expensive right now. But there's a couple guys coming out with some cheaper options. You should make that Mustang a YouTube car and we put a- This guy's building a tire rack on the back of his Miata to get his tires at home. That's pretty rad. This car sounds really sweet from the outside because you can hear the intakes, you can hear the exhaust, you can hear it coming towards you and away.
Mineral Wells is a pretty rad track. I mean, it, it's uh, basically a big, like an extra, it's like a giant parking lot, but it's like an airstrip thing. It's like an emergency. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, it's out here in Mineral Wells, Texas. They got a big, uh, big water tower. It was actually the first Lone Star Drift event I came to was actually here. It's only like 10 hours away from me, which isn't too bad. Um, so I definitely would like to bring my S14 and the Mustang down here later this year. Uh, once uh, kind of get those things figured out. But yeah, it's a really rad track. You could, I mean, you could pretty much pin it almost all the way to fourth gear and enter it like over 100. Today, Aaron entered it like 78. Adam entered it like 77 and I was like 75 or so. But um, yeah, it's a fun track. The cars. Tons of fun, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Trevor about to take her out. Brake lights like claps. Dude, I swear it looks like a GTR from some angles. I love it. She's dirty girl, huh? Yeah. I love this camera, dude. It's so smooth. I feel like the shots look so pro. Yeah, I think you need to get one for events. Just I think I need to get me a 370. I think we both need to get a 370. We, we have one lease for a year. I just, I just, yeah, that's true. I just love how cool it looks. You got the tire rack on, ready to go home. So the cool thing is, if you run a Miata, you run like 205, Thanks so again, you, bring man, much, you can bring a bunch of tires with you. Yeah. So this might be the last time we actually uh, see it before it gets put into the trailer. I'm not sure if we're gonna unload it today, I think. Or do you think we're gonna unload it? Probably not. We might unload it. But uh, anyhow, yeah, this thing's been, Amazing opportunity. I really appreciate Aaron uh, Lozzi and what he's doing out here in, uh, in Texas for kind of the us and all the street legal guys and trying to keep drifting simple. Uh, he basically brought a bunch of sponsors on board. Inky, BC Racing, uh, Siki, AEM, Intakes, these things sound awesome. And then ISR for the suspension and exhaust and stuff like that. And I think RSM will be sponsored too. Oh yeah, he tuned it. So yeah, this thing's rad. Um, I don't know. It's. It's crazy. It's crazy how good this thing is for just being how really simple it is. Like instead of a swapping a motor, we put wise fab and suspension on it. Yeah, right? That's true. That's a good point. Hi right, guys, so we're back here at uh, at Sean's house. Adam signed the fender that we signed last time we're here. And uh, he's checking out the power wheels. He wants to do a, a custom build. I think I should be looking at doing a built power wheels before you. Well, I just figured, like, I'm going to need a couple of years to, like, if I want to make an exact replica of my S13, I better get started now. Yeah. That sounds good. But yeah. Um, anyhow, I appreciate everything you've done for us this weekend, Sean. Yeah, I know uh, we're, we're hanging out, but we, we took your whole weekend. You're good. We took it all. But I don't think it could have worked out any better because uh, Nicole was out of town. Mm -hmm. 
your wife and daughter was out of town. Out of town. And then, uh, I mean, for me, I just, it just worked out for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, Jamie was at the house. She wished she was actually Yeah, ja Jamie was still at the house. Um, I got to drift a wife down 370Z. So yeah, we got to drift. Right? Yeah. 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 370Z is awesome, so be sure to check out Aaron's channel. Uh, check out Sean's channel, Mustang09. And uh, check out Adam's channel, if you haven't checked out Adam's channel. I'm sure, you get, I'm sure if you guys... I just keep making this stupid face whenever someone points a camera at me, I just go. Adam's really awkward when you point a camera at him, so I, I try to do it sometimes. But That's okay. I'm sure if you guys watch my videos, you probably watch his videos, but if you, if you guys think he's a dick, he's not. Should we just... <laughs> yeah. Link in the description, LZBMX. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, I appreciate uh, if you guys watching, stick around for this. I know this is probably a really long video because I tied it into... I don't know how you do the daily. Yeah, I don't know either. That's insane. So this mine's probably gonna be like an hour long video, so yep. See you guys later.